doing? Thanks for joining us here on the Safety Watch Update. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the latest protective clothing that has them talking from Allentown to Gary, Indiana. We're also going to let you know why each piece is important and how it should be used. The EPA has categorized protective clothing into four different levels. Levels A and B are the most comprehensive of the four levels. They include skin, and eye and respiratory protection. Level A provides maximum protection for all three of these areas. Level B is suitable when the skin protection is not a high priority. Okay, now let's take a look at an example of the highest level of protection, level A. Notice the worker is completely covered by a suit that is specifically designed to protect against any chemical permeation. The gloves and boots are also chemical resistant and are attached directly to the suit, eliminating the possibility of any dangerous materials reaching the skin. Under the hood, you'll find a self-contained breathing apparatus or an air-supplied respirator. If you don't know what substances you may encounter, then a level A or B suit is the right choice. You can move down to level C if you know exactly which substances are present. Level C allows you to customize the clothing to your safety needs. An SCBA is not necessary with Level C. Since you know what you're being protected from, you can use a NIOSH-approved air purifying respirator with the appropriate filter. Now here are some examples of Level C protection. A bodysuit at this level could be either a one or a two-piece coverall made from all kinds of materials. The protection that's right for you depends on what hazardous material you're working with. All the seams should be leak-proof and checked regularly. And notice, in this case, the gloves and boots are connected with tape. This is a practical way you can be sure that hazardous material doesn't splice onto your skin. Check with your supervisor to find out if this is allowed at your company. Now, let's take a closer look at what you should check for when you first put on your protective suit. Before donning your protective suit, it is vital that you make sure it is in top condition. Check the material for any areas of discoloration that may signal the material has been weakened. Hard areas on a suit might be indications of exposure to a chemical that has made the material brittle and susceptible to cracks. Inspect all the seams for any areas that are no longer leak-proof. I'm sure you'll recognize this look. It's level D protection. Coveralls and uniforms make up the majority of protective clothing at this level. Also, respiratory protection is not required. This clothing is not designed to protect you against anything except incidental contact with non-hazardous materials. Now we come to my favorite part of the show. Anyone who knows anything about fashion and safety knows the importance of accessorizing. We'll start at the top with head protection. You'll notice that Bill is wearing only a bump cap, but Jane has a helmet. Which one should be used in your situation? Let's find out. Hard hats protect against impact and penetration from falling or flying objects, electrical shock, and burns. In order for your hard hat to be effective, the helmet suspension needs to be adjusted properly. This distributes and absorbs any impact you may encounter. Hard hats come in three classes of electrical conductivity. Level A is for limited voltage protection. Level B is for high voltage protection. And level C provides no voltage protection. The class ID can be found inside the helmet shell. A bump cap is used where workers are subject to lacerations or bumps to the head, but not for injury from falling or flying objects. They are not substitutes for hard hats. Now we're going to cover those things that cover you. Aprons. Uh, not exactly, guys. I'm talking about industrial aprons. Make sure the aprons you use are made of material that is strong enough for your application. When you're finished with your apron, remove it before removing your gloves. Don't let the outer shell of the apron come in contact with your skin or unprotected clothing then place it in the appropriate bin for cleaning. 
Uh, some aprons, like Jane's, are disposable. It doesn't go in the trash can, though, Jane. It goes in a hazardous materials bag that is properly labeled so it will be disposed of appropriately. Oh, nice catch. No, those aren't catcher's mitts on her hands. They're protective gloves, an essential part of your safety wardrobe. To protect your hands from minor abrasions, a coated mitt glove should be adequate. For laceration protection, you're better off with a glove made of leather or with Kevlar lining. Stainless steel mesh are the best protection, but they offer little sense of touch. Insulated gloves or gloves with Kevlar lining help to protect against extreme temperatures. If you use disposable gloves, be sure you know how to discard them properly. Carefully grasp the wrist edge of one glove with the other hand and peel the glove halfway off. Then grasp the other glove with the first glove and peel it all the way off. Using your bare hand, turn the first glove inside out around the second glove and then discard. Linemen or electricians who work on energized equipment must wear specially made rubber gloves. Leather over gloves may be necessary to help protect the rubber gloves from wire punctures and cuts. With all the choices on the market in eyewear, it may be difficult to decide what's right for you. Are safety glasses okay for the occasion? Or would a face shield be more appropriate? Let's find out. Although face shields cover the eyes, don't be fooled. They are not eye protection. They are secondary protection and must only be worn in conjunction with safety glasses or goggles. Face shields are attached to an adjustable head harness similar to that of a hard hat. If the area you work in requires head protection, you can adapt the face shield to fit right onto a hard hat. Goggles come in three basic types, ventilated, non-ventilated, and chemical splash. Ventilated goggles are the most comfortable and least likely to fog, but should not be used around harmful gases. The vents allow no protection against the vapors. Non-ventilated goggles offer sure protection against vapors or dust, but have a tendency to fog. Chemical splash goggles have indirect ventilation ports that do not have a direct path of airflow from the exterior to the interior. This provides maximum protection from chemicals while allowing some ventilation. If you wear prescription lenses, you can use larger goggles that are designed to fit around your glasses. It's time to get to the bottom of protective clothing. Consider all the different ways your feet could be injured, and you'll see that this is one area of safety that can't be underestimated. If you work around heavy objects that could roll or fall, safety-toed shoes should be worn. Safety toes can be made of metal or heavy plastic, depending on your exposure to electrical hazards. These shoes can be supplemented with metatarsal guards that protect the upper part of your foot. There are special soles that guard against puncture, Conductive shoes allow electricity through the sole of the shoe, while non-conductive shoes insulate against shock. Each day, before donning your footwear, check the soles for any cracks or punctures and make sure the shoe has maintained its structural integrity. Keep your footwear stored away from excessive temperatures and chemicals. Well, that does it for this edition of Protective Clothing. Let's review the four levels. Level A is the level of maximum protection where skin, respiration, and eye protection are necessary. This is commonly used when there is uncertainty about what airborne or tangible substances will be encountered. Level B is similar to level A, but provides less skin protection. This is appropriate when only the airborne substances are in question. If you know exactly what substances will be present, then you can design a protective uniform that protects against those substances. This is level C protection. Also, you may not need a self-contained breathing apparatus. Since you know the airborne substances, you can use a respirator with the appropriate filter. The most common protective clothing is found at level D. This consists of uniforms and coveralls and aprons. Of course, you can always choose clothing from a lower level to supplement a higher level. For instance, a helmet from level D could be incorporated into a level A suit. Now, one more thing before you go. If you work around a heat source or outside in these suits, you could be in danger of heat exhaustion. When wearing chemical protective clothing, you may find yourself overheating quicker than you would expect. 
This is because a full body suit doesn't allow your body's built-in coolant, perspiration, to evaporate. If you feel yourself getting overheated, rest, or only do light work for a few minutes. Some jobs in abnormally hot conditions require some sort of body cooling systems. Ice vests and air vests are two commonly used systems. Thanks for joining us. Now stay tuned to Safety Watch for all the latest developments in the world of protective clothing. And stay safe.